Hey everyone! Melissa here from Be and Cozy Stitching. Welcome back! Last time we got together, we talked about what inspires us. How do you get your mojo back when you're running kind of dry in the ideas department? And we talked about several things. But one of the things that we talked about was this box of fabric that I had. And I brought this box of fabric down and showed you. And inside this box of fabric were these lovely blocks. They were all finished, all ready to go. They just needed to be sewn into something or set in or what have you. There's 28 of them and they're 25 squares and they each measure about two and a half inches. This is the perfect scrap project. I don't recommend this project for charm packs or candies or layer cakes because you just don't have enough variety, um, enough different color, print, texture. Um, what makes these blocks so interesting, and you can see some of them behind me, what makes them so interesting is the hodgepodge of fabrics put into them. They're in the same color families or color shades, but they're not the same print in different colors or there's no repetition, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. When you get into the layer cakes, the charms, the candies, etc., you're pretty much stuck to whatever the designer designed in that particular line of fabric in whatever colorway they chose to make that. So you're limited. Not that it won't look right, but you're just limited. And there's not enough blocks there. We have over 700 blocks here in this little quilt top. Um, we've got 28 blocks with 25 blocks in each one. So there's a lot of color choices and a lot of varied prints. And so, yeah, I mean, if you want to go ahead and use a charm pack layer cake, jelly roll, candy, whatever, go ahead and use them, but then supplement them with scraps and pieces and things that you have in your own fabric collection or your scrap bin. Because at the end of the day, we want to learn or use up our scraps. And that's kind of my mission here at Being Cozy Stitching. I want to show you what you can do with your scraps and how beautiful they can be. Um, there's nothing I like better than a good scrap quilt. The fun part about this as well uh, is that not only does this land in as a scrap quilt, but it also lands as a charm quilt. And if you remember back to our previous video on charm quilts, a charm can be any size that you want it to be. The only hard and fast rule, if you will, is that no two fabrics can be the same in the quilt. Now, if you're doing a scrap quilt and you just want to use up your scraps um, and it's the right color and the right size, use it, use it up. We'll never tell. We'll never tell. Um, but I'll also put a link down below so that you can check out our video talking about charm squares so that you've got a little bit more information on just what exactly is a charm quilt and you can kind of take it from there. What's nice about this one is it's laid out in kind of a rainbow formation. So you've got your yellows and your oranges, your reds, your purples into your pinks, your blues and your greens. And so it's kind of trying to keep a pattern together for you or a, um, a color idea, if you will. Most people think that a charm quilt just has to be everything all thrown together, that it can't have any order or any consistency. And I'm telling you, yes, it can. You can order your scrap fabrics into rows with certain colors or patterns or whatever you know, whatever you're choosing, whatever looks pleasing to you. But this is just another example of that charm quilt. And they were already done. They just needed to be put together. So it made them the perfect project for us to get into. So this is where I'm starting. And 
when I look at this quilt and I looked at the 28 blocks, I thought, I really want the colors to pop more. I really want them to stand out. My background behind us is kind of gray and you can see how, while it's nice, they're just kind of blah. So I wanted my color to pop out now. and in order to get those colors to pop out, I wanted to use black fabric but not necessarily solid black fabric because I'm going to put these together just a little bit differently and show you an easier method of sashing in between your blocks without having one long continuous sashing and then having to line these up and line these up so that they all form straight lines and while it can be done and there's a few tricks on how to get that done that's not the method that I'm going to show you today today I want it to be super super simple I want a beginner to be able to do it I want an advanced person to be able to do it and I just want to show you something different and maybe you will make more charm quilts if it's easier to put them together that way so after auditioning a bunch of different fabrics, the one I finally chose to go with was this wonderful black fabric with all these crazy dots on it. And I don't know if you could see that, but I'll show you again. These dots are all wonky. They're different size. They're different shape. They're just kind of all over there. Kind of just crazy wacky and I like crazy wacky so that fits my personality perfectly you might want something a little more settled down but for me crazy and wonky works and when you put the fabrics together see how it just pops the color right out of there that's what I'm going for and I chose a busier pattern because of the way that we're going to construct this. I don't necessarily want all my seams showing. And the busier the fabric is, the easier it is to hide your seaming. So let me go ahead and get started and show you how to get this done. And we'll see if we can't talk you into making a charm quilt today. So hang on and I'll get my table cleaned off and get my fabric all ready and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now that we have our fabric laid out on our cutting mat, um, let me back up just one more second. When you look at my squares, each one of these are two and a half inches and they finish up roughly to be about a two inch square. So I decided that the proper size for me for a sashing would be a two inch sashing. Because I think that would look about the best. Any more than that, my block gets lost. It kind of gets overwhelmed. So anything smaller than that. And kind of why bother because it doesn't do anything but make it more busy. So what I decided was to go ahead and go with a two and a half inch, a two and a half inch cut so that we've got two and a half inch strips and my two and a half inch strips then I'm going to sew onto the yellow side on each and every one of my blocks because I want a little bit more consistency because this has the makings of, a, of going pretty wild pretty fast. Now with one strip, I don't know if you do this with log cabin sewing or not, but with one strip I'm able to put four blocks on here at a time. And that way I can do a little bit more chain piecing and not quite so much cutting and stopping and starting. So as you can see, we can get four blocks on one strip. And if you remember, we've got 28 of these squares. So 28 of these squares and four on one strip, we're going to need six two and a half inch strips to sash along one side of our project 
Um, and I say one side because we're actually only going to attach the sashing to two sides. We're not going to wrap it completely around the block. We're going to attach to the yellow side and then we're going to come across the top and we're going to sash the top as well. So really all we're going to do is sash here and then across here. So when you're going this way, you're going to need six two and a half inch strips. When you're going this way, you're going to need another six two and a half inch strips. So all together, you need 12 two and a half inch strips of fabric for your sashing if you're going to do your blocks at two at two and a half inches um, finishing at two inches. So let's go ahead and head over to the sewing machine now. I'll just give you a quick review of sewing this on so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and then we'll head right back over here. All right, we're over at the sewing machine now. We've got our pile of blocks that need to have sashing added to them, and we have our pile of sashings that we're going to attach to our blocks. Now, let's talk sewing machine. What do we need? We need a quarter inch foot because we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam. We need hmm, a size 14 needle is fine. If you have an 11 on there, that that's okay too. That's good for piecing. These aren't thick. We don't need a whole lot of extra oomph from our needle. So if you have an 11, that's great. If you have a 12, that's okay too. If you've got a 14, your universal size needle, that's fine too. But don't go any bigger than that because then all we're doing is making a great big hole. Um, our stitch length is our regular um, 1.8. So you can go ahead and, or if you have a machine that does one, two, three, four, whatever, just before the two is good enough. And over at the work table, we had talked about, I want to keep a little consistency with my blocks. So I'm going to take the yellow side and I'm going to put that right sides with my um, sashing strip. I'm going to match my edge. I am going to make sure that my sashing is on the bottom and that the right side is facing up. And I'm just going to flip over my block so that my yellow side lines up, line up my raw edges, and sew my quarter inch seam. Nothing fancy here, nothing too difficult, nothing special, just some plain average everyday stitching. And this is good practice if you're a beginner and if you're an advanced person that has had their mojo stolen, this is a good warm-up exercise to get you back into practice for sewing your quarter inch seams for accuracy. Now just before I get to the end here, I'm going to stop and I'm going to add my next block. I will leave a little gap in between the two blocks so that I have some room for cutting, uh, cutting them apart. I don't need a whole lot of room between the two because one slice for the two of them is all I really need. You can go ahead and get it all squared up after. Um, so again, very simple very laid back, casual, relaxing sewing. No stressing here whatsoever. This is a no stress project. It's going to be so great to have all of your scraps out of the bin and into a beautiful little project. I like these projects. Simple, quick, and they're always a surprise to me. And every time I finish a scrap quilt, I'm always just absolutely amazed how that pile of hodgepodge fabric becomes this wonderful quilt when all is said and done. All right, so there's number three. 
and here comes number four and then this strip will be done and we can move on to the next strip and you can see that there's very very little waste as we get to the end here there's just this little tiny bit of fabric left over you can put that in your container and save it for trash can fabric or you can throw it away whatever you choose to do but there you have it and that gives us four on one strip with a tiny bit of cutting in between to separate and then we'll go ahead and press our seams open and we're going to press to the dark side so we'll press towards the sashing all right i'm going to go ahead and finish sewing all of my sashings on and then i will meet you over at the cutting table and we can take our next step from there okay everybody we're back at the cutting table and I put the blocks on the design wall. But don't you know it? I don't know how I did it. I don't know where they are. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I miscounted, whatever. The very first time I laid them out on the design wall, they all fit perfect and it wasn't a problem. Now I went to sew the sashing on the blocks and as you can see, we're missing two two blocks i don't know how i did it or where i did it but you know what it works out perfect because now we can put the brakes on and we can take a step back and i'll show you how to put the block itself together and then i can make the two we're missing and then we can keep going from there but don't you know it rainy day mondays okay so i snagged one of the blocks themselves and I know this is an easy block and I know you can figure out how to do this. So don't worry, because remember we picked something easy just to get us back in the groove. So what I had to do was go through my scrap piles and I had to come up with 25 squares. One, two, three, four, five across and one, two, three, four, five down. I needed five colors in each color family green, blue, purple, red, and yellow. My yellows tended to go into the orange. My reds, eh, they're pretty much the same. My purples kind of blended into pink, and my blues are blue and my greens are green. That's what I could find. I needed to get this done, no problem. So once we have this together at this point, we have all our two and a half inch blocks cut out and they're all in the right color family and we've looked it over and it's exactly what we want. So now it's time to put it together. So what we're going to do is just leave it on our design board so that we don't mess anything up. We're gonna flip over and we're gonna chain piece these because you know me, I only have a few minutes. So we gotta get this done. And then we're gonna sew our quarter of an inch all the way down then we're going to open that back up and we're going to sew it on to this one and then to this one and then to this one so what we end up with i just love that i have two blocks it's so much easier to show you guys so what we end up with then are strips of color our blocks are sewn together they're all put together and now they just need to be sewn together into block form. So what we're going to do is you take your rows and you nest your colors. And I'm going to come up real close so you can see this. But see how you've got your line here for your blue and your line here for your green. We're going to nest those together, kind of wiggle it back and forth until it locks into place. Then we're going to pin that and then we're going to open it up to make sure that we line up and we do so then what we're going to do is we're just going to sew down the strip and we're going to keep adding a strip as we go so then the next one will be the purple and then the next one will be the red and then last we'll put the yellow on until we get to the point oops i dropped it on the floor excuse me just a minute 
uh, till we get to the point where our block looks like this. Then when the block looks like this, we take our two and a half inch strip, our sashing strip and sew it to the side and we press it open, we press to the dark side. Once you have it pressed, you might wanna take a ruler and square it up so it's all nice and pretty. And then we toss it up on our design wall and get our second set of sashing strips put together and then I'll show you what we do next. But for right now, we need to get these blocks sewn together and we need to get the sashing attached and then we can get on to the next step. So hold on, we'll get there. Okay, so we got our blocks finished and we're gonna slide them into place. Okay, so now we've got one sashing all the way complete and we have all the blocks we need. Isn't this gonna be cool? Oh, I love it. All right, so now what we need to do, we need to leave one, two, three, four, five, six across the top, just leave them there. Then all the rest of the blocks, we're going to attach our sashing from here to here. So, yeah, even the four we set aside when we first did it. See, we didn't want to put a sashing over here because remember, we're going to go all the way around the quilt with a border. So we don't need that little piece of fabric sticking out here. So now this time we need to include them, but we need the top row to be left alone because we're attaching the sashing to the tops of each of these blocks. And we don't want that little piece of fabric up here because again, we're gonna put a border all the way around the outside. So we don't need to have fabric up there. So now I'm going to collect all of my blocks and attach my sashing to the top. You should do the same because I know you're doing this with me. It's so much fun. Oh my goodness. I can't wait till it's done. But let's go ahead and go over to the sewing machine and attach the sashings to the top of each block. And then we'll press them all to the dark side. Come back and trim them all up so they're nice and even and nice and neat. And then we'll put all the blocks up on the board so you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like when it's all done. Okay, meet you back here in just a second. Okay, so we're back at the sewing machine. I've got my sashing strip. I've got my blocks oriented the way that I want to put them so that I make sure that I get the top or that I get the sashing sewn to the top of each block. And I'm gonna go ahead and whip through my pile of blocks. You go ahead and do yours. And then we'll get them all pressed up, squared up, and back on the design wall.
Okay, so now we've got our pile of blocks finished. We've got our sashings along the yellow side, and we've got our sashings across the top. Now what we need to do are get rid of all these tails. So we'll go ahead and trim up our block, and it's real simple. We're going to line up along the side here, lining up our line here, and cut away the excess. And then we're going to come along on this side. Again, we're going to line up in that seam and just go ahead, cut off our excess, put that in the scrap bin. And then once we have all of these all trimmed up, some of them need a little, some of them need a lot. Um, so don't be surprised if you don't need to do anything to the block. Just go with it. It'll be an easy day for you. And like I said, then once we have all of our blocks squared up, we'll go ahead and put them up on the design wall. And you can see the magic happen with just putting two sashings on two sides of each block. Okay, we've got all our blocks done. They're all ready. They're all squared up. Are you ready for the magic to happen? Okay, now, if you'll remember, we had the original four that we didn't do anything with. And the next step was to put a sashing across the top. And then we kept the five across the top that we did not put a sashing on top of, but just in between each block. Okay, so... Now, unfortunately, you're going to have my back to you, but I want you to watch what happens as we go along. What we're doing is we're going to place our blocks like this. Did you see it? Did you see what happened? Now, all of a sudden, we've got our sashing through here. We've got our sashing through here. And the only place we need to match are right here with our pins. It's exactly the same thing that we did on each of the smaller squares inside the block. So let me show it to you again because it's amazing. All the blocks get placed in all the exact same direction. And I'll hurry and try and put some of these up here so you can really see it come to life. But do you see how easy that is to get a sashing put in there and have all your blocks line up each direction? And it was so fast and so easy. We hardly had to think about it at all. Put a couple down here. Oh, I'm so excited. This is going to be so cool when it's done. Then from here, it's pretty simple and it's pretty basic. Um, I won't bore you to tears with it, but you're going to sew block to block, block to block, block to block. And then you're going to do the second row, and then the third row, and so on and so forth until you've sewn all of your blocks into rows. Then you're just going to flip down, matching at the intersections, nesting those seams together. This one will get pressed this way, this one will get pressed this way, this one will get pressed this way, this one will get pressed this way. That way your seams are opposite each other. So when you wiggle them in together, they get in there nice and tight and you've got these beautiful corners. But the joy of this is, this is so busy. Our sashing fabric that you're not really going to pay attention to the seaming because it's a helter-skelter of polka dots all over the place that distract your eye and keep you away from the seaming. And what you're going to see is all these colors pop right out of there 
and it's going to be awesome when it's done. I am so excited. I'm going to throw some flannel on the back and a big, wild, crazy, oh, I don't know, 70s looking design on the top. And I think, I think it'll be amazing when it's done. So make sure you pay attention to some upcoming show and tell videos. I will try and get pictures of this quilt when it's finished put up on the website so you can take a peek at that as you go along. But otherwise, my friends, this is our simple inspiration quilt. I love it. I'm on my way. And my next one, we had seen the flag made out of old shirts. I have my shirt piles. I've got my whites. I've got my blues. And so that's going to be our next project that we'll put on to video for you so you can see how to use up that wild and crazy fabric. I don't have enough of just my shirting, so I'm going to mix in some cottons with that one. Um, good luck. I can't wait to see how that one's going to turn out. It'll be just fine. We've done it before. No worries. But you're going to be surprised at how wonderful it all melds together. And it looks great. So I'm excited to show you that one. And then we'll just keep digging in that box until that box is empty. And then we'll move on to something else. But I'm really excited about this variation of a charm quilt. And I love this simple, easy technique of putting sashings on so that you don't have so many things to match up in the end. Um, it goes together way easier than if this was one long sashing piece because it would be considered a row then and you'd have to line everything up. And yeah, it can be done, but this is so much easier and so much quicker. And remember, we don't have a whole lot of time and there's so many projects to make. Let's, let's make it a little easy on ourselves. So I really hope you're excited with this project. I hope that you will give this a try. Make a charm quilt for yourself. They're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Look at this. Well, that's what I have for this week. I'm so happy that you tuned in. I hope you were inspired. I hope you use up some of those scraps. Please remember to hit the subscription so you can come along with us and see more projects on how to use up your scraps. If you like this video, hit the like. Let us know what you like and what you don't like. It, it, it makes it so much easier to make more content when we know what you like. And don't be afraid to hit that little bell. All that little bell means is that you'll get a notification from YouTube every time we put a video up. And that way you don't miss out and you don't have to search for us. We come to you. We try and make it easy for you. That's all we've got for this week. Happy stitching, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.